Today, we're gonna to look at the tools I use for spoon carving and talk a little about building your own spoon carving kit. We'll start with the basics, then look at some additional tools and finally possible upgrades to those tools. There's a link in the description that has an article with links to all of the tools mentioned, plus links to some other options as well. The basics. You wanna get yourself a knife, get yourself this knife. The Mora 106. They retail for about $25 all over the internet. It's a fantastic knife and honestly the best value out there. This quite long blade gives you a very narrow tip, which means it's great for carving tighter concave curves. It's a nice laminated steel birch handle. Crappy little plastic sheath, but that's fine. It works. There's not many other options better than this uh, in this price range. Next, the hook knife. New and improved Mora 164 is probably the best, most available hook knife. So that's an important caveat. It's not a great hook knife, but it's easy to find and it will definitely get you started. These retail for about $40, again, all over the internet. And it comes with quite a nice leather sheath to protect your edge. We'll talk about some other uh, upgrades to your hook knives in a moment, but this will definitely get you started and get you started quickly. If you get yourself some spoon blanks, then you can pretty much start carving. In my workshops, I've noticed that ax work and sourcing raw materials tend to be the main barriers towards people starting spoon carving. So getting some spoon blanks from a maker removes these barriers and gets you carving sooner. Eventually you want to be making these on your own. Next, sandpaper. Everybody uses sandpaper when they start out, everyone. It's the easiest way to tidy up an almost finished spoon without ruining it while you're still building your carving skills. You get a finished spoon and don't end up hating the process. What we've got here is a selection of high grit sandpapers. We've got some 1500, some 3000, some 5000 and 7000. We'll be using these to sharpen our tools. So in addition to these, you'll want something flat to wrap them around, to, cut, uh, to sharpen your straight knife and the outside of your hook knife. And then you'll want a wooden dowel to wrap them around to sharpen the inside of your uh, hook knife. You can also see I've put some green honing compound straight on top of these wooden pieces. So these are now my strops as well. So some sandpaper, a flat piece of wood, a round piece of wood, green honing compound, and you can start sharpening your tools as well. Either you've carved a few spoons and you want to broaden your capabilities or you're confident that spoon carving is something you want to take a deep dive into, here's what to add to the basics. The first thing that you're probably going to want is some sort of saw. Uh, this is a Japanese style pull saw, but any sort of cross cut saw or pruning saw is needed. One of the many great things about spoon carving is that the raw material literally grows on trees. In trees? It's wood, the raw material is green wood that you can usually find for free. Even though I live in a city, there's more wood coming down each week than I could ever hope to get through. Most of the time, it won't be the right length. So get a pruning saw or some sort of crosscut saw. I had a no-name hardware store crosscut for years until the handle broke. Really doesn't have to be anything special. Next is an axe. This axe is from Greenhaven Forge. It's a fantastic little budget option for under $100. If you're just starting out with spoon carving, get one of these. If you're in Europe or the UK, Wood Tools, the Robin Wood Axe, they do something similar for more or less the same price. Well under $100. Fantastic little carving hatchet that will get you started without breaking the bank. To go with your shiny new axe, you'll need a surface to carve on, some sort of chopping block. I'm in the process of making myself a new one for my workshop. To make sure you don't miss out on that tutorial, hit the subscribe button and that video will be coming out soon. This is an ADS. It's a weird love child of an axe and a gouge. Uh, having an ADS will let you hollow out spoons quicker. It also opens the door to carving bowls and cups. 
This 50 millimeter Hans Carlson ad works great, but ignore the shoddy replacement handle I made for it. I do need to change this. Getting a draw knife was a game changer for me. Having both hands on the tool makes it very safe to use. It engages your large back muscles, letting you perform very powerful cuts with a lot of control. It's a nice tool for in between the rough work of an ax and the fine detailing of the knife. I've had a lot of luck with the secondhand market when it comes to draw knives. Get a six to eight inch straight draw knife with a clean looking edge. They're pretty simple to sharpen up. Just as an ax needs a chopping block, the draw knife needs the wood you're working on to be clamped into place. For that purpose, I use a spoon mule. A finishing knife. So this can be a slightly smaller knife than your regular Sloyd knife for more fiddly cuts. I have this one from Dave Cockcroft. It could also be a second Mora 106 that you keep aside for finishing cuts. A finishing knife is basically just a second knife you keep super sharp and save from the more abusive rough cuts. Really nice to have, but not at all necessary. This is a fro. It's a splitting tool often used to make shingles. It's nice to have a splitting tool that's really long. Sometimes I'm splitting up like 16 inch diameter logs. So having something that can rest most of the way across for an accurate split is really nice. The removable handle gives you some nice leverage when you're trying to open up a split. For spoon carving, totally unnecessary, but it's a nice little splitting tool. You can do an awful lot of really accurate splitting with a wooden wedge that you've made yourself. The fro's nice, but if you're having issues splitting little wooden wedges, they're great. So those are all of the tools that you need or might want for spoon carving. Let's look at some of the upgrades to those tools that we've already mentioned. The first upgrade I would recommend would be to replace the Mora 164. If you're happy to spend the money, you can even skip getting one of these and go for one of the other options I'm gonna discuss. Problem with a lot of these is that they're harder to find than the Mora 164. So this will get you carving sooner. If you're looking to have the fewest tools possible, then I'd recommend getting something like this Scorp from Lee Stofer. It will give you the greatest versatility uh, you don't need right and left-handed hook knives, which are required for scoops with deep vertical walls. And the compound curve lets you carve a variety of spoon bowls. My most used hollowing tool is this 70 millimeter Tuca Cam from Hans Carlson. The large radius gives a more gentle sweep and it makes cosplaying Captain Hook a lot easier. It's a great hook knife. My most used regular hook knife would be the faucet hook from Nick Westerman. There's quite a wait list for his tools, so I recommend hopping on it now. He also only sells unhandled tools. So if you're not confident about handling a tool yourself, don't worry. There's plenty of folks out there who would be happy to provide that service for you. Uh, this is a, an excellent hook knife. I've also got a similar hook knife. This again made from Hans Carlson. I really like the round tang for hooking my finger around. Uh, it's a, a, a great little hook knife that's very comfortable to use. If you're looking for more hook knife options, there are other hook knives that I've used but don't own, and those are all in the document linked in the description below. I own a variety of different dedicated carving hatchets. If you watch my review of the Wayfarer Axe, you'll get to see them all. Carving hatchets tend to have quite an upswept toe. They tend to be bearded and have quite a curve to the handle, weighing in around 700 or so grams. At the moment, my favorite ax is this, the Kautov Small Carver, uh, but it's just a personal preference. If you read the document in the description below, I'll outline all of the different axes that I've owned or tried. If you get one, getting an additional ax isn't gonna add much utility to your toolbox, but it's fun owning a bunch of axes. The Mora 106 could easily be your forever knife. A handmade Sloyd knife will offer upgrades in the form of 
better steel, usually greater comfort and an improved edge geometry. A beginner is less likely to benefit from these differences, so start with the Mora 106, learn how to sharpen on it, reshape the handle so it better fits your grip, carve a bunch of spoons with it. Then if you want something a little fancier, you'll have a better idea of exactly what features suit your carving needs. While sandpaper will give you an excellent edge and on that account, there's no reason to change. I do however, find it to be a little wasteful. A piece of sandpaper can only be used on a couple of tools before it's no longer cutting steel efficiently. So sharpening stones feel like a less wasteful option. Uh, I have a set of Japanese water stones. They're all Shapton stones, but they're a mix of their glass stones uh, and their Kurumaku stones. Water stones are great. They're a little messy uh, and they need regular flattening to keep them cutting properly. So another popular choice are diamond stones. I've never really got into diamond stones, but as their diamond abrasives stuck to lumps of steel, they don't tend to dish out like water stones. I think I just prefer the feel of water stones. A further sharpening upgrade and easily the most expensive piece of kit in this video would be getting a Tormek. A sharpening wheel is the only way to put a hollow grind on an edge. Uh, the biggest advantage of a hollow grind is that they're quicker to resharpen and you only remove steel from the edge and the back of the bevel. Tormek systems easily the best out there. Uh, I teach carving workshops, so I have eight sets of axes and knives and hook knives that I need to keep sharp, as well as my personal collection of shiny sharp things. Having jigs that can give you the perfect bevel angle every time is kind of amazing. It's expensive, but if you decide you need one, it's a really nice piece of kit. An upgrade to the crosscut saw would be a chainsaw. Bucking a 16 inch diameter log by hand isn't much fun. So I kind of love my electric chainsaw. It's a bit of a wimp, but it's quiet and I can use it in my workshop without choking on fumes. It works for me. If I had to replace it, I'd probably go with a corded chainsaw as the battery life isn't great. So those are the tools I use for spoon carving. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're not already, consider subscribing to my channel. Thanks.